So now we're getting ready to do the marbling technique. The marbling technique follows the same principles as the color meshing technique done with the woolly. So if you are interested in doing this, you should watch the color meshing portion of the video. To have the greatest level of success, you'll want to choose your paint colors three to five shades apart. This is done by taking a look at a fan deck and choosing a color that you think you want your end result to be in the room as far as lightness and darkness. In this particular situation, I'm going to choose this color right here. From there, I'm going to go up two shades, one, two, and this will be the first color that I'm going to use. In order to choose my second color, I'll go back to my original color and drop down two shades. This will be my second color that I'll use. Ultimately, my end result will be somewhere in this tone. Now being that wifting, you can use between two and six colors in one coat. If you choose to add more accent colors, you'll want them to be on the same level as your darkest color. So you can choose more colors to make it all work. What's unique about this is that no new base coat is required before you begin painting. So if you have builders flat on your wall, you're ready to go. Even if it's a color that you don't care for, don't worry about it. You do not need to put a base coat on the surface before you begin. Now today we're going to use latex satin finished paints and we've chosen our paint colors three to five shades apart. We're going to use them directly out of the paint can. You do not want to add glaze to this. The woolly is made from natural sheepskin and it's been cut into a pad before it's been applied to the handle. When natural sheepskin is cut, it actually begins to shed. So when you have a brand new woolly, you want to take the masking tape and wrap it around your hand, like so. Then take the woolly and do is drag it across the sheepskin. What that does is it gets rid of any excess lint. That simple. Now we're going to prime the woolly, and that's done by taking the paintbrush and incorporating all of the different colors that we'll be doing our faux finish on the wall with. Take my brush, and I'm gonna dip it in my first color and apply it gently just to the tip of the sheepskin. I like to wrap the brush with the paint around around the edge because this is the area that's going to fit into the edges and corners. Now, we'll do that with all of the colors that we're going to be using in our faux finish. So now we're getting ready to do the marbling technique. The marbling technique follows the same principles as the color meshing technique done with the woolly. So if you are interested in doing this, you should watch the color meshing portion of the videos. But the only difference is, as, apply, as opposed to applying the paints in splotches randomly, we're going to apply the paints in a diagonal fashion. This gives us a backward drop that's appropriate for veining. I'm going to take my big brush and begin by applying my first color. I'm going to go ahead and apply it in a diagonal fashion like so. Now the way I apply the paints is I kind of like to just roll them off the brush. If you're not comfortable with that, you can apply them just like so. You don't need to have your line going perfectly diagonally. It can get fatter in some points and thinner in others. That's entirely up to you. And sometimes they even connect. Taking my same brush, going into my second color, go ahead and fill in some of the open areas by applying more diagonal lines using the brush. Like so. Now we can stop with two colors or we can keep adding more colors. And I think I'm actually just going to add a little bit of gray here and there. Now what's different from this technique to the color meshing technique is the color meshing technique we brushed randomly. With this, we're actually going to brush in a diagonal fashion, just like so. Spreading the paints out 
Then we're going to take the woolly, and again, different than the color meshing technique, as opposed to tapping randomly, I'm going to go ahead and tap in the diagonal pattern, following the lines that we created with the paints. Going back and forth, you can go back and forth a little bit, but primarily following the lines that you've created. Now what's interesting is the, the color meshing technique I actually prefer very blended and very muted, whereas the marbling technique I prefer it to look very raw and textured looking because it does have another step following this step. And it, just like the color meshing technique, if there's an area that you'd like to see a little bit more of one color or another color, go ahead and add it. Now this looks fabulous how it is, and you can just leave it. But to complete the look of marble, there's one more step, and that's done with the marble veining feather. But before we can do that step, we do need to allow this surface to dry. So that's what we're going to do, and we'll be right back. In order to prepare the paints to do the marble veining with the marble veining feather, you're going to want to use a measuring cup and mix one cup of paint with three cups of water. Stir it up and you're ready to go. We're ready now to do the marble veining using the marble veining feather, which is basically a turkey feather. Now what's interesting about this is we've got this whole big feather, but the only part we're actually going to use is the very tip. I'm going to dip it into my paint water mixture, wipe off the excess, I'm going to use the tip of the feather to basically draw a marble vein on the wall, like so. Now one thing that you do want to do is if you'll notice I'm jagging it to create the line here. What a common mistake is, is often people just pull it and make kind of a, I call it the shoelace effect, where it looks like this. You don't want that type of effect. You want it very jagged, like it's just cut through marble or granite. Twist it and turn it as you're dragging. Now if you notice I'm shaking a lot as I'm doing it, you want to do that. If it's helpful for you, a lot of people use their left hand if they're right-handed or use the right hand if they're left-handed to create the marble veins. They also can go in any particular direction that you want them to go. Now notice here I've kind of followed the background layout that we've uh, done. But this here, I'm actually going to just cut it right across where it connects up with the pre-existing vein. Now this is something, a technique that you might want to get a piece of poster board and sit down and practice before you actually go on the wall. But once you get it, once you do a little bit of practicing, it just clicks and it's really very quick and very easy, not to mention beautiful. Well, the marbling technique is finished and it's really quite easy. It's certainly beautiful. So when you're doing this technique or thinking about rooms to put it in, Think about powder rooms, accent walls, anywhere that you want high drama. It just doesn't get any easier than this. <laughs>